Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. Recently, this sign appeared by Wellington Road South. Stockport Transport Interchange is nearing completion. This is my last update before it officially opens its doors to passengers on the 17th of March 2024 at St. Patrick's Day. In this video, we'll take a look at some of my uh, then and now images of the project. And also, we're going to take a look at some interesting residential projects under construction within sight of here. We'll start with a then and now view from October 2021, shortly after construction began, fading into February 2024, when it was in its closing stages, filling up the field of view, the transport interchange, and the three tall blocks, two new, one from the mid-70s. This view is from the top of the steps where the artist Ellis Lowry once had his photo taken by the photographer Crispin Urich. What would Lowry make of the scene today? There's one of those passing freight trains just making its way across the viaduct at the moment. I hope those apartments have good soundproofing. On the left, the glass frontage of the nearly completed interchange, and straight ahead, that groovy spiral ramp. Wow, it looks very precarious, jutting out over the river like that. The spiral provides a link for pedestrians and people on wheels. From the ground up to the park, on the roof of the interchange, 8.13 meters, or 27 feet and three inches above. Let's move up into the air now for a drone view of the project, which is very curvaceous, a quality I like very much, though difficult to recreate with my favourite toy, Lego bricks. It's great to have a new park in Stockport Town Centre and it makes great use of the space. The publicity states that this is a park that everyone will be able to enjoy. What they mean is, it is, as we say in German, barrierefrei. It is barrier free. There are no barriers for disabled people. It is accessible to all, including bus spotters, who will have a fantastic view of the buses arriving and departing down below. I'll be there too. Okay, let's have some statistics. There are 18 bus stands allowing 164 bus departures per hour. The new park will have an area of two acres. That's just over 8,000 square meters, or about one larger size football field. The most important fact, nearly all Stockport-based bus services will arrive at and depart from the new interchange, except for the 192, which runs up and down the A6. Someone has nicknamed the transport interchange the tissue box because of the oval-shaped hole in the top. I'm not sure if that name's going to catch on, but it's given me an idea for a model. I think I'll use a detergent box for the block and lots of model buses. The interchange extends underneath the Wellington Road viaduct built in the 1830s, reaching almost as far as the shopping centre on the other side of Mersey Square. Further down Wellington Road South, we can see the circular so-called bear pit, which I trust is going to be fully renovated. Let's do a flashback now to the old bus station. There's the 199 to Manchester Airport waiting by the bus shelter. And nearly three years later, a construction vehicle, also bright red, is in use to complete the final work on the site. That residential building for rental apartments reminds me a bit of a chocolate bar with three different types of chocolate, plain, milk and white. Three years later, the 199 heads down Wellington Road south towards Mersey Square. Soon all those stagecoach buses will be painted in the yellow B network livery. Stockport will be joining the B network in 2025. But let's take a look at some more residential projects under construction literally within sight of the viaduct. What's that construction site in the distance? We're flying towards the west above the River Mersey and there it is a big new apartment complex under construction. It's on the site of the old Springmount Mill. It's in a commanding position overlooking the valley of the Mersey. It's on a sloping site above Brinksway, which is part of the A560. Brinksway was built on the edge of a steep hill. The old Springmount Mill dates from the 19th century and it lay derelict for many years. Then came plans for a new residential development. It's taken a few years to get this far. The site needed to be thoroughly cleansed of toxic chemicals, which cost a lot of money. That would mean that no affordable apartment could be included in the project. Springmount Mill was designed by L7 Architects, developer Carpenter Investments. It's a PRS development. PRS stands for Private Rental Sector. Just along the A6 is, or was, the Farmer's Arms pub. My dad used to drink there. It closed during COVID and never reopened. Now it's being demolished. For another PRS project? No, for a drive-through outlet. For 
Greggs, the UK's largest bakery chain. Close to Stockport Town Hall, built 1908. Opposite Fred Parry House, built 2010, on Edward Street, there is a new development under construction, comprising 131 one- and two-bedroom apartments for social and affordable rent in Stockport. It's a project of the Guinness Partnership. Not far away on King Street West, the steep street that goes down by Stockport Station, and conveniently located opposite Ironsides Lubricants, is this new housing project. That's a nice historic photograph of the viaduct being widened in the 1880s. I think we should have historic photos on all our streets. The sign says, step up into your brand new place at Platform. Find your way to own. Rent at a discounted market rate, while you save for a deposit to purchase all of your apartment, or a share of it in the future. There will be 73 one and two bedroom apartments. And that's how it's going to look when completed. It's built on this sloping site, once home to a very cheap car wash I used to go to. I enjoyed sitting in the car as it towed you towards the end. And right next door, there are plans for the community fire station. We'll revisit that another time. And now we're back under the viaduct, looking at the Weir Mill residential project. The tall block constructed cheek by jowl with the viaduct is nearing completion like the other buildings on the other side of the viaduct, with the old mill behind, they're at a lower height. Let's go back to 2021 to see how things looked before construction. Quite a transformation. Seen from above, Stockport's curvy transport interchange looks futuristic, like something out of the science fiction comic books I read as a child. But the future will be arriving in Stockport in just a few weeks. I'm looking forward to walking and cycling along the ramp and bridge connecting the interchange and the railway station. Looks like it needs a lot more work doing on it and there are only 21 more days to go. People have said that actually the transport interchange should have been called just a bus station because it is not situated immediately next to the railway station. But it couldn't have been built there because the site has limited access. It would not be possible to have 164 buses an hour exiting onto the A6. It's bad enough at the moment with queues of cars at the McDonald's on the corner. The transport interchange was built on the site of the old bus station and it has access in all directions, north, south, east and west. And there's a new bridge across the Mersey too. The new pedestrian and cycle link shrinks the distance from the interchange to the railway station. That distance is about 300 metres or 984 feet, roughly the same as from the end of Platform 14 at Manchester Piccadilly to the front concourse, or at Euston Station, down at the other end of the line, from the end of the platforms to the main entrance. About a five minute walk. Stockport Interchange is an interchange because it links buses and trains, and you can change from bikes to buses or trains too. There are bicycle storage facilities, and in the future, there will be Metrolink. They've left some space for it. In the poster for the local elections 2021, we can see Elise Wilson, former Stockport Council leader, now consultant and public speaker. Andy Burnham is still at the helm as Mayor of Greater Manchester. I'd love to get his thoughts on the new interchange and the prospects for the Metrolink line being extended to Stockport. And talking of Stockport Council, this is the infamous bus gate. As seen in numerous headlines, the council have made nearly £1 million in fines. Very bad PR, I think. This is Heaton Lane, and they have to keep it free because it's one of the main access roads to and from the interchange. But I think the signage on Wellington Road is inadequate because it doesn't warn you about the penalty charge. As one project finishes, another is about to start. The bridges just south of Stockport Station need to be rebuilt. Seems not so long ago since the West Coast Line was electrified. Well, 1960. The armoury tunnels were opened up. New bridges were built. Soon, there will be major disruption around Edgeley. But I've also heard that the future Metrolink line is going through a tunnel under the station. I need to find out more about that. I think the interchange will bring great benefits to Stockport, and I'll be using it regularly. But let's keep an open mind and see how things go. I'll be reporting on the new interchange when it opens. And I'll include then and now comparisons using all my archive photos that I've taken of the project. So please keep watching Aiden Eyewitness. If you found this video interesting, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share with others, and post a comment. If you have any opinions, suggestions, or insider information. And if you think you can help me out, then please donate to www.buymeacoffee.com. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Stockport.